Namo namaha, swagatam sarvebhyah. Now, in this segment, we're going to be learning about the last of the major tenses in what's known as the present system within the Sanskrit, the bhasha, the language of Sanskrit. Let's go quickly over, if we can, all that we've learned so far, and it's been quite a lot. We started with the basic present active conjugation known as the lat. Right? These are verbs like gachati, he, she, or it goes, pashyami, I see, honsi, you kill, dadati, they, uh, dadati, sorry, they give three or more. Uh, present active tense, the kartari, lat, is what it's known as. Uh, we've also learned the karmani, lat, right? The passive present tense, where the target or the object of the action is now the focus, uh, and it gets put into the nominative, the first case, while the person who's doing the action is moved over to the third case, the instrumental. So, tayavanam gamyate, the forest is gone to by her. Maya uh, mala drishyate, the garland is seen by me. Tvaya rakshasa hanyate, the demon is killed by you. And then we learn how to make both active and passive simple past tenses. These are known as the kartari and karmani lang, the imperfect. Uh, sa ogachat, she went. Right? Taya vanam ogamyata, the forest was gone to by her. Aham apashyam, I saw, or maya mala adrushyata, the garland was seen by me. Then we learn the imperative tense very recently, also known as the lot, right? This is how you give specific orders or commands in a public declaration. So, sawanam gachatu, let her go to the forest. Malam pashyani, let me see the garland. Rakshasam handi, kill that demon. Remember, we can also do passive imperatives, which are based off of the passive stem now. So, tayavanam gamyatam, let the forest be gone to by her. Maya mala drushyatam, let the garland be seen by me. Or tvaya rakshasaha hanyatam, let the demon be killed by you. Now, there's one final type of conjugation that involves our present stem. Uh, remember the present stem we're going to be we're going to be creating by using those ten different lovely classes of roots, that, uh, which have been divided into the aganas. That's classes one, four, six, and ten. Versus the non aganas. Those are classes two, three, five, seven, eight, and nine. These are going to be used with yet another marker and another set of endings to create what's called the optative, uh, or in Sanskrit, it's the ling. Uh, sometimes it's specified as the vidhi ling, meaning the optative in the sense of injunction, vidhi. Uh, the optative is one of the most broad-ranging and impactful constructions in Sanskrit, uh, especially within an important genre of text called the Dharma Shastra. Right? These were texts that were codified over centuries uh, that kind of laid out how people, uh, what was the right way to behave, to live, to be lawful, good, virtuous, that kind of thing. So they're filled with injunctions, right? Rules, precepts, declarations of what ought to be done, what should be done, what must be done. And that's the basic range of the ling, this optative, is to give general rules or suggestions of what one ought to do, what should do what one must do. You can say, for example, Ramaha vannam gachet. This would mean Rama ought to go to the forest. Rama should go to the forest. Rama must go to the forest. There's a second way that the ling gets used, actually, and that's as a hypothetical condition. Uh, so this has the meaning of might or may or would. Uh, this, ha this is often found in if-then situations. So consider the following statement, Yadi Ramaha vanam gachet, tarihi dasharataha so shochet. If Rama might go to the forest, then dasharatha would grieve. Both are hypothet hypothetical situations, and so they both get placed in the optative tense, in this vidiling. So with that in mind, let's look quickly at how to make the optative. It's actually fairly straightforward, uh, with very few exceptions or weird cases. Thankfully, uh, the basic idea is A, you're going to start with making your present stem from your verb root, and then B, you're going to add the optative marker. Now, this marker is going to be either A, long E, or Ya, based on if it's an agana or non-agana, 
Parasmaipada or Atmanepada root. And then C, you're going to add secondary endings, which are almost entirely identical to the imperfect endings, except for in the Parasmaipada and Atmanepada, third person plurals, they're going to have different endings. Uh, the easiest situation is if you have first an agana root. Uh, take, for example, the class one bhu to be or become. We first form the present stem. This is going to be bhava, right? Uh, and then you add our optative marker long e, which is going to sandhi with that a always, which is at the end of the agana stem, and it becomes a. Bhave. This is your stem plus the optative marker. Then you add your secondary endings, the same ones that you would for the imperfect. So you'll get saha bhavet. He ought to become. He should become. He may become. Tvam bhavehe. You should become. Aham bhaveyam. I should become. Uh, notice that the, a ya gets interjected, a yakara gets interjected between the ekara and the um ending. This is an important rule. It's going to happen in all the endings that start with vowels. You're going to have an infixed ya. For the optative, the third person plural, but a smaipa, the ending is going to be uhu instead of un that we had in the imperfect. So uh, we would get bhave yuhu. They should become. Again, note that the vowel initial ending makes you. Uh, forces you to insert this yakara in between the optative marker a and the uhu ending. Let's think about the agana atmanepada verbs now, like lab, a first class root, which means to get or obtain. Labhate, he, she, or it obtains. The optative is going to start with the present stem, labha, then you add the Opti the, 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 you add the optative marker long e, which converts to a, and then you uh, have your atmane by the set secondary endings, the same ones that we use for the imperfect. So we get sa labheta. She should get. She ought to obtain. She might obtain. Dwam labhetaha. You should get. You ought to get. The first person ending for the optative atmane pada is different now from the imperfect. Uh, it's just the letter a. Uh. The okara. So we get aham labheya. I should get or obtain. Again, you have an insertion of this yakara between the two vowels of the, uh, the marker and the ending. The marker has to be per visible, basically. The third person plural for the atmanepada is going to also be different. Here we have instead, we're going to have this ending ran instead of anta. So we, we can say te labhe ran. They shall obtain. They ought to obtain. They must obtain. The others, all the other forms are going to be regular endings, uh, so we'll skip those for now. Uh, the, so those are the aganas in both parasmaipada and atmanepada. Now for non-agana roots, meaning classes 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 9, we're going to have different situations if the root is parasmaipada or atmanepada. In both cases, we'll only ever use the weak stem for the optative. <laughs> Note, sear that into your head. Uh, for uh, Only use weak stems. For parasmaipada, you take the weak present stem and you add ya as your optative marker. Then you add the parasmaipada endings. So for the class 7 verb yuj, meaning yoke, join, harness, control, we're going to take the weak stem yunj, add ya, and then add the ending tukara to get saha yunjiat. He ought to yoke harness control. He should do yoga, right? Tuam <laughs> yunjiaha. You should do yoga. Uh, for the third person plural, one unusual thing happens. The a ah of the optative marker gets dropped, and you just end up with yuhu. So for yuj, it'll be yunj yuhu. They should join harness or control. Uh, the same thing is going to happen for first person singular as well. The ya marker and the ending combine to become yam. So we'll get aham yunjiam. I should join harness or control. Finally, for non oganas in the Atmanepada, we're going to again take our weak stem, always take the weak stem, but now you add the optative marker long e and then add the secondary Atmanepada endings. So let's take the verb as. Class 2, meaning to sit. We take the weak stem as, we add the long, uh, the, add the optative marker long e, asi, then we add our atmanepa, the secondary ending to get, saha asita, he should sit, he may sit, he ought to sit, tvam asitaha, you should sit, you ought to sit, aham asiya, I should sit, notice here again that, that 
a special optative ending for the first person singular in Atmane, but the third person plural, again, we'll use run as the ending, giving us a si run. They should sit. They ought to sit. So that's basically it. Those are our four general situations of how to form the vidhi ling, the optative. Uh, let's take a break here, and when we come back, we'll look at two important irregular forms of the vidhi ling, uh, the paradigms for us to be and gru to do, which you should learn carefully, put them right in your head. Uh, and we'll also learn about one variant of the ling, which is called the ashir ling, the benedictive tense. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Punar milamaha, danyavadaha. <laughs>